Hi, I'm Hazel, and this is a look at the Thwarting the Twins Artifact Challenge. This one is for Shadow Priests, Affliction Locks, Marks Hunters, Balanced Druids, and Frost Mages. I'm showing it from a Shadow Priest point of view, but you might still pick up something useful as another class. First thing is to choose your legendaries. If you have Pride As, I'd wear it. It's a get out of jail free card on a 30 second cooldown, and this fight is full of jail. Next, Safu's is absolutely godly for this. This fight is a massive kite fest, and Safu's trivializes a good portion of it. How important having Safu's is will vary between the classes. For Shadow Priest, I have yet to see a single one under 920 item level beat this without it. For consumables, bring flasks, combat potions, and I really liked the bear tartar food. This will give you an almost constant sprint during the second and third phases, which comes in super handy. Last, bring a big stack of Drums of the Mountain so you can lust yourself. Don't use them on your first few pulls while you're learning the fight, but once you're feeling confident in the mechanics, you want to pull out all the stops. Finally, you just want a lot of gear. If you're under 910, you may or may not be mathematically able to complete this, especially if you don't have the right legendaries. 100 Nether Shards a try isn't that much, so definitely give it a go, but don't feel bad if you can't do it. You can always get more gear, more legendaries, more weapon traits, and then come back later. Your first attempt is free, and all future attempts are a flat fee of 100 Nether Shards each. This will absolutely take you multiple tries. It's only available to pull while the Mage Tower has been built on your region, and the Mage Tower will fall after roughly three days of uptime. So, enter the instance and walk in to start the RP. You can pre-pot with a prolonged power right when Karam starts his I obey line. The idea for this first phase is to not let him hit you and DPS him down to 33%. He walks slowly at first and then gains speed as time goes on. Try to mostly kite him around the main platform. There's lots of room around the edges, but I found that going really far out causes hands to spawn out there later, which is really bad news. As a Shadow Priest, spam Mind Flay whenever possible to try and proc Call of the Void tentacles to slow him for 10 seconds. Use Mind Bomb on cooldown to gain distance and get damage in, and to proc your sprint if you have Safu's. If you have Pride Ads, you can let him hit you to get knocked back for some extra distance once or twice early in the fight. If you're not wearing Pride Ads, that hit might kill you, so I wouldn't recommend it. Once you get him to 33%, his brother heals him, becomes attackable, and phase 2 starts. A bunch of little ads will spawn and start oozing your way. They do massive damage if they get to you, so you want to kite those too. As a priest, I dot them all up, and then as they die, they proc the Bear Tartar Sprint. After about 40-ish seconds, Raced will go immune, Karam will start chasing you again, and you'll need to kite him too. During Phase 2, these big hands will spawn and start casting Grasp from beyond. That will nearly kill you if you have Pride As or one-shot you without it. You can silence the hand, stun them if you're not using it on Karam, or Dispersion to survive a blast. I recommend silencing the first hand, dispersing the second one, and then silencing the third. They'll start casting again after they get kicked, so those are your top damage priority when they're up. You need to kill them before they get another cast off. Don't forget that Karam is still chasing you. I found that using mouse over macros for my silence and mind bomb made this phase of the fight much easier. Instead of scrambling to find the hand and switch targets, I just mouse over the boss frame to silence or mind bomb it. Mages, hunters, and locks can set up those macros for their kicks by replacing silence with the name of the spell. Damage Karam to 33% a second time, and the final phase will begin. Phase 3. You're almost done, but it's about to get a lot worse. Not only does all of the above keep happening, now you get these purple runes on the ground. If you stand in it, it'll shrink and disappear. If you don't, it'll spawn another massive murder ad for you to kite. Of course, you're still kiting Karam and the spooky little guy, so standing still is a bit rough. I recommend saving Mind Bomb for when the rune is up so that you can manage that. At this point, Raced is attackable and you need to kill him to finish the fight. You only need to kill Raced standing over there in the middle, so don't worry about damaging Karam in this last phase. Use the drums, your second combat pot, and any cooldowns you have left to finish the fight. For Shadow Priests, it's a good bet to take Surrender to Madness and use it here. Remember to keep interrupting the hands or killing them, don't let anything get to you, and do as much damage as you can. If you kill Raced, you did it, you're done, and you officially have a super cool weapon skin. At item level 903, with 41 traits and no Safus, I was not able to complete this encounter as a Shadow Priest. If you don't have both Pride As and Safus, and you're not item level 915+, it may be worth waiting until you pick those up. 
For Mythic Raid Geared Shadow Priests who do top end damage, you might be able to cheese the fight by using Surrender to Madness, Mania, Drums, and then bursting down Raced during the 40 seconds that you get to hit him at the start of Phase 2. For me, I'm going to keep improving my gear and give it some more tries whenever the Mage Tower comes back up. Thanks for watching! Let me know what you think! Good luck trying for your challenge appearance and have a wonderful, wonderful day! Bye!